Hi, I'm Ashwin Droning on. Now, 2016 brought us Mavic Pro, and that gave us a hint towards what might be coming in 2017. This year, it's all gonna be about size. Early in 2016 and even late 2015, a few manufacturers tried via crowdfund campaigns to create the ultimate mini drone. They didn't quite succeed. But there's a new entrant to the market, the Wingsland S6. Midway through this year, they did something rather unusual. They released a pre-production model to many customers. They weren't particularly happy because it lacked the functionality and the firmware and the app wasn't quite up to date. But they've just released version two of the hardware, which has a much better specification. The app has also evolved, as has the firmware. There have already been some reviews of the new hardware, but those reviews had some inaccuracies and we'll correct those during this review. We're also directly in contact with the manufacturer Wingsland, who are going to be providing us with updated firmware and app as they're released. So I'm on my way to the flight test field because thanks to Hobby Wow, one of the few stockists in Europe that are sending out the version 2 hardware, we've got one for test and review. So we're going to crack on with the unboxing and the inspection. The flight test video will be in part two. Enjoy and be sure to comment, like and subscribe. So here it is. As I said, Hobby Wow have been very generous in sending us this for review. This is exactly how it arrived. And what is also nice about Hobby Wow is that their items don't take four weeks to arrive. This arrived in four days, which is really impressive. Let's get it open. So there we go. It's packaged nice and securely. And there is the Wingsland S6. Let's open up the main box. And actually that's just the exterior packaging. There's a another box inside. It's like past the parcel. I know it's Christmas guys, but come on. So that's the actual final package. It looks really, really nice. It's beautifully packaged and would look great on a shop shelf actually. Let's get the cellophane exterior off. Okay, so opening up the box, first of all, on the inside, we've got a list of some of the accessories you can get. Now these make this quite cool and quite different, but I don't think these are available outside of China at the moment. Um, so I'm not really sure about those. We've then got the drone itself, which comes in a nice plastic presentation box. Lift that out of that tray. And so you've basically got a plastic holder that you can use to transport the drone in here, which just unclips and then opens. We'll have a look at that just in a second. We'll just see what else is in the box. Uh, instruction manual, uh, very basic and all entirely in Chinese. That's not gonna help us a lot. And we've then got another bit of paper, which is also entirely in Chinese. That's not great. Uh, under this plastic bit of film, I, I have to say the pa packaging here is really, really nice quality. Um, there's a little guide here as to what all the bits are under this film. But um, So we've got, first of all, a tiny, tiny little screwdriver in here, which I can't get out. Uh, we've got a USB cable wrapped up there. We've got the battery, which I know is a two cell 1400 milliamp LiPo. And it's a proprietary uh, battery here. so that's made by Wingsland specifically for the quad. And there is also a set of spare propellers. It looks like we've got uh, possibly eight, so four sets there, four pairs. And then we've got the charging unit, which is again proprietary. Um, there's a little USB port on the, the rear there for connecting it to the power. And the battery simply slots into that yeah, there we go. So, uh, under that we've got a quality control sticker. It's in Chinese, so I'm not sure what's passed, but I guess it's passed some sort of quality control. So, a little bit of a, an issue, I would say, with everything there being in Chinese. Uh, it's, it, it, it's, I have read that this product wasn't ready for the international market, and that it's only actually l selling right now in China. So. That really should be made clear on the website, I would say, and I'll give that feedback uh, to Hobby Wow. So let's have a look at the exciting bit now. It's nice that it comes with this little plastic carry case. That's really cool. In terms of size, so if I just bring my phone into the shot here, 
This is a Samsung Galaxy S7, um, which uh, is your average size phone these days. And you can see that it is slightly bigger than the phone, but you know the phone fits in your pocket with lots of spare space, so this is going to fit in there quite nicely as well. It doesn't feel cheap, and bearing in mind that you're paying quite a bit of money for this, uh, about £300, $360, uh, you expect that sort of quality. Uh, if we compare it to like the Dobby and other folding quads that have now appeared on the market, I think the only immediate downside of this one is that the props don't fold inside the body. So they are exposed on top. And for that reason, when you're transporting it, you might actually want to use this little carry case so that the props don't get damaged or catch on anything. But besides that, it is a, a good feeling unit, this, and um, yeah, nice quality. This little port here is for attaching accessories to the S6. There are some tiny little metal contacts in there that you can see. There are, I think, four accessories available, including a BB gun and an LED display, which you can show emojis on. But I don't think these are available outside of China at this time, and they do seem to be hard to get hold of. So I guess that's for future expandability. Uh, we've got the camera unit, which is a 4K capable camera. Um, I know that it gives a live preview of 480 or 720p and it's capable of 4K at 30 frames per second, which is good. It is not gimbal stabilized, it is three axis electronic stabilization, which we all know gives very mixed results. So we'll be testing that during the flight test to see if the results are actually usable. What is a real shame as well is that the camera does not tilt. So you're stuck with the angle that the camera is facing. It looks like it's about a 15 degree angle downwards um, from what I can see. So you've got to make sure that you get the altitude and the distance away from you correct when you set this thing to follow me. A very, very big shame that that's not tiltable. On the front, we've got some lights here and it looks like we've also got a kind of LED flash that you might see on a mobile phone. Um, on the rear, we've also got, I think, some lights here and the battery bay into which the battery slides. On top, we've then got the motors, which are little 1106 43 kV motors, and they are really beautiful. I love these tiny little brushless motors that they're fitting to these small quadcopters these days. They really are quite a work of art. Somebody has mentioned in a, one of the discussion forums that these tiny little Allen bolt, Allen key bolts here that hold the props in place have been loose on theirs. Mine are actually all tight, but also don't over tighten these. These props are supposed to be free and movable. So if you over tighten these, you might get some excessive vibration. Looking at the underside of the quadcopter, we've got some cooling fans here and here, which you will hear fire up when we start up the quadcopter. Not sure why, but on mine, there was a bit of tape across the CE and FCC certification details here. I don't know why. We've also got a power button on the rear, which you press and hold to turn the quadcopter on and off. And most importantly, excited to see our two ultrasonic sensors here, which are very similar to those sensors that you see on the Typhoon and the Phantom aircraft. They tell the aircraft what's happening below it. So for example, obstacles or trees or people, etc. Um, also is a tiny, tiny little camera here. Now there have been quite a few reviews of the revised hardware version of the S6. Many of those reviews have said that that's an IR sensor. It is not, it's a camera. And just to validate that, I've actually removed the screws already from this. And if I remove this tiny little connection here very carefully, and there you go, you can very clearly see there that that is a tiny, tiny little camera. Evidenced as well by the fact that this is a little adjustable focus lens. So. That is a camera, of course it's not IR, you can't have a quadcopter that's indoor hover position hold capable with IR, it needs a camera, it needs optical flow. So good that they didn't remove the camera because the previous hardware version also had a camera unit, it's still there. We've got some little rubber feet here, so that provides a landing gear. They are very low profile though, so when it has actually landed, if we just take these off, protective bits of plastic. Um, when it's actually landed, you see they only give a couple of millimeters protection for the ultrasonic sensors. So you might want to extend these because if you're landing on grass, for example, and it's wet, you're gonna get your ultrasonic sensors wet as well and possibly water's gonna intrude into these cooling vents. 
The feet are rubber as well, so it'll have a bit of grip when you're landing on concrete or taking off, which is good. Uh, and of course, the cool bit now is that these arms unfold and they're very rigid. They're not loose or flexible or cheap feeling. They really do fold out quite solidly. Um, they lock into place in part, but they are still movable back. So neatly hidden behind one of the folding arms is a USB port and also an SD card slot. So obviously the USB port, I guess is going to be so you can plug it straight into your computer and read the SD card contents without taking the SD card out. Um, the SD slot, of course, is going to be for recording and capturing the onboard footage, video and photos. Interestingly, when all of the arms are folded out, they have a sweeping pattern, so they're swept backwards rather than all being equal. I'm assuming that that is possibly to give the quad better forward speed, actually. On the top is the GPS unit, which actually has been relocated. There was an older version of the S6 hardware. And on this version, the new one, the GPS unit has been put above the battery bay. So if you have a version of the S6 which does not have the GPS unit here, make sure you send it back to the retailer. Um, Hobby Wow are fortunately sending out the new version, which is good. Another observation that I have is the amount of pitch on these motors. They have an incredible amount of pitch, and I hope that those don't overload the motors. We'll test that during the test flight to see what sort of temperature they hit after a flight. There's no doubt about the fact that this thing does look really good aesthetically. The question now is whether it flies as well and has the features that it promises. It has an all-up weight of about 230 grams, which means that for those of you in the USA, it's under the 250 gram threshold for having to register it with the FAA. So that, of course, is a bonus. So the next step is to get the battery charged up. I've plugged the USB cable that it comes with into my extension from my regular telephone charger. So I'm going to plug that end into the charger now. And when connected, I get a flashing red light here. So again, this is all proprietary. This is all Wingsland. None of this, I believe, is OEM. It's all um, their own design and their own build. In fact, we've got Wingsland imprinted onto the charger here as well. So with that light flashing, I'm going to plug my battery in like that and when it slots in I guess that light will change color okay no it's still red and it's now gone solid so we'll now leave that for some short time and see how long this thing takes to charge and so back to the battery after an hour and a half of charging it's finally finished and that's indicated by the LED light on there going green. Unfortunately however it's dark outside now and so we're going to have to do the flight test in the next video. So subscribe now to get first notification. Also comment and hit thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Links to the products are in the video description so you can view the full specification there and we'll see you on the next video in part two. Thanks for watching.